Hey guys, today's tutorial is on how to compute a proton NMR shielding tensor for your molecule. Um, so we will look at uh, TMS's reference and then repeat the same calculation for benzene and toluene um, because that will allow me to give you useful insights on how to reduce the error for your values. So um, just as a disclaimer for this video, if you hear weird noises is because my bird is sleeping in my hoodie and if you hear little peeps and squeaks it's because it's waking up. Disclaimer! <laughs> okay, let's start. So we're gonna first look at um, TMS molecule um, because that will be our reference for our first calculation. Um, basically you have a silicon atom surrounded by four methyl groups. Um, we're gonna create the Gaussian input for this and then add more stuff to the basic input from here. So when you have generated your first input file, open it in Notepad, um, and then we will have to add a second part to our first uh, input. Uh, the first thing you have to add is this uh, checkpoint um, file reference uh, that will be created uh, to save the, um, the output of the first calculation, which is the optimization, to be used uh, for the NMR calculation as a second part of the job. Um, and basically, you scroll down after the last line um, of your atoms and Cartesian coordinates. After you've skipped one line, we'll have to add this whole second part over here that will tell Gaussian that the work is not done yet and that we have to also compute uh, NMR shifts. So um, this link one line indicates to Gaussian that um, it's not over. Uh, this line tells it where to read the coordinates from and the molecular orbitals from. Okay, so geom check and guess check uh, read, these are the lines, uh, the keywords that tell you um, like, hello here, we already calculated all of that, you can just go check in a checkpoint file, you don't have to redo all of this. So that's what's going to happen here, and the NMR keyword is to compute the um, shielding tensor. Uh, side note over here for the basis set, from what I read, um, the bigger, the better. Um, so whatever you can afford, uh, go for it. Um, and uh, don't be shy, just jam it all in as much as you can. Um, when you're done with this, uh, you add the title line, skip a line, and then add the multiplicity, uh, charge and multiplicity, and your input is done. So you have two parts for this input. All right, the output of this um, kind of input looks like this. Uh, you will start off with the normal optimization part over here, and once the optimized structure has been found, um, you will get to this NMR uh, output. So you can search for tensor as a keyword, and it will right away jump to the um, like the NMR part output. So here, what do we get? We have for every atom the atom number and the atom name. And then we have the isotropic value in anisotropy, but we're looking at this isotropic number um, for protons. So we'll just scroll a little bit further down and we're going to get these values out. Because there's several protons, I copy all of these values into the Excel and over here, and then I totally average. So 31.9 for me. Acceptable. Um, and then I repeated exactly the same thing for benzene and for toluene. Okay, uh, and I also copy pasted all of these protons into my Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so let's look at the results because um, that will allow us to get to some cool insights. Um, so first of all, benzene. Um, benzene's protons have all the same environment. They see exactly the same thing as their neighbor, and therefore you would expect them to have all the same uh, shift, right? 
Um, and that's basically what we get. Um, is the same value for the protons, and I took also the average, and I get 24.02. Um, now, to obtain the shift, what you have to do is uh, subtract this value for benzene from the value of TMS. Okay, uh, so you do 31.9 minus 24.02, and you get 7.88. Now, if you look at the experimental value, you will see that it's actually 7.36. Oops, so I have an error of 0.5, which is not that great. Um, but this is not bad news, because benzene, in this case, will be used to give us better results for a different molecule, similar but different. And this is toluene. So let's pay attention to what toluene looks like. It's basically a benzene ring with a methyl on it. And if we do the same NMR calculation for toluene, now we have different kinds of protons. So there have, they will have different um, kinds of shifts. We have the protons that are uh, further away from the methyl, like these three, they will have a certain um, shift compared to those two that will have a different shift, and these three will also have a different shift. So now we have three kinds. Right? So if we do the same calculation for the shift based on the TMS value, so we will do 31.9 minus whatever we get here, you get this column over here. And if you compute the error compared to experimental, then you will see that my error vary from 0.5 to 0.2. So on average, I get an error of 0.35. Hmm, interesting. How come for benzene we have such a big error and for toluene we don't? Well, if we look closer, the biggest, the bigger shifts are actually for the protons that are on the benzene ring. So that can hint us to the fact that maybe we should add a second level correction to our already corrected value. Right? So what I did is I, I decided to add this error that I had for benzene into the calculation for the toluene. And what I did is I took those values, the shift by T corrected by TMS minus the error that I got here. All right, this gave me this set of values over here. And now, if you look at the errors, it, we just by doing that, we just reduce the error by half compared to the the values that you get non corrected by um, the benzene error kind of thing. All right. But let's pay attention to where the biggest error arises. If we look down here, you will see that the protons that are in the benzene ring have a fairly small error now. However, the protons that are on the methyl ring, they have a huge error. So what happens if I don't do this benzene correction for the last three protons? and just keep the same values as before. Now my error has reduced by a lot, and the average error is only 0 0.02. All right? So all this to say that just because TMS is um, a good reference experimentally, it doesn't mean that it's a good reference computationally. and what you have to bear in mind is that the closest the molecule that you use as reference is to the molecule that you're actually trying to look at and study, the smaller your error will be. So what we did for toluene is that we used the correction for benzene on the protons that are on the benzene ring, but then we did not do that for the protons that are not on the benzene ring because these methyls look awful lot like the methyls over here, right? So in short, if you are able to find a molecule that looks a lot 
like the molecule that you're studying and that you have experimental um, values for those, then you should use that as a reference and not TMS. Um, also, a thing to maybe look at is uh, the solvation of your molecules and maybe increase your basis set even more. Um, and that's pretty much it on uh, proton NMR shielding. I hope that was useful and I'll see you next time.